Yo, Elliot. I've been living with what I think is a Jezebel spirit in my woman. She's secular minded, lukewarm of God, quarrelsome. We've been in a marriage like situation for 4.5 years. I'm having trouble hearing God, but I think he's telling me to get out. Yeah, he is. Just by mere virtue of you living in sin is evidence that you should get out, but it gets worse. We have two children together, <laughs> so I find it difficult to do. I always wanted a normal marriage with kids, so splitting up my family is tough against these expectations. You, I don't believe you. Just because you say that don't mean it's true. Because if you always wanted a marriage and family situation, a normal marriage and family situation, you wouldn't have been cohabitating with this girl for four and a half years, uh, fornicating and making illegitimate bastard children. Sorry to put it that way, but we need to bring that word back because it is what it is. One of the things that the Marxists wanted to do was to legitimize illegitimate children because that would, that would legitimize fornication and debauchery. And so, you know, I'm not saying, I don't know you, I don't know your children, but your children are bastards. And that's your fault. So you over here telling me that you want a normal marriage, but yet you, bast you, you, you have illegitimate children and you cohabitating with a woman. That's why your life sucks right now. That's why that Jezebel spirit is a mirror for you. She runs your life. She wants to rule your life because she doesn't see you as a, as a strong man. She knows you're weak and that she has control over you because you're willing to sleep with her, live with her, sire children with her, and not make any provisions for vision in your life. There's no room for vision or mission. You just go on with the flow. And a man that goes with the flow is a man that women will control. You have to be deliberate and you haven't been deliberate. And so this is where you are where you are. He says, I'm constantly trained, uh, drained by her. She's not very respectful. I don't know if it's who she is or if we're just incompatible. I stuck with it for the family against my gut in intuition. I, I, I have a ring I purchased three years ago. I didn't want to give it to her. Not really in love, and I feel shame in both staying and going. What does your relation on spiritual maturity see in this situation? How do I hear God properly? How do I figure out this biblical masculine way to live? You can't hear God if you're not in a, a state of grace. You are living in a state of mortal sin, and when you do, your intellect is darkened. Father Ripperger calls it this way. He says, when, and this comes from Thomas Aquinas, when you are living in mortal sin, your, your intellect is darkened. And how does your intellect get darkened? It's darkened because you will rationalize your sin. And so you can't see reality if you're rationalizing your sin. Does that make sense? You're, this, is why you comp, this is why the Marxists wanted to compromise us in sin. Because the minute someone's compromised in sin, they're, that's it. They're a slave to that sin. How do you become a slave to the sin? Because you can no longer see that sin after you've, you've, you've convinced yourself that it's not a sin. Otherwise, you wouldn't be living this way. And that's what the world has been doing. It's been teaching us that we could live any which way that we want, and it's okay. We're going to go to heaven, and God loves you. But that's not true. Just like if a tree, you know how trees bend towards the sunlight? If a tree is, is planted in the shade or is planted somewhere and there's shade on one side, there's light on the other side. The tree has an intelligence, but our intelligence is even greater. The tree has instinct. It can't help itself. But the tree is going to bend towards the sun. The tree is going to bend towards the sun. And what's going to happen when it bends towards the sun? It's going to be raised up towards the sun. It reaches for the sun. But if that tree, which I know doesn't make any sense, but you are like that tree, moves away, moves out of the sun and leans towards the, leads towards the darkness into the shade, it can't receive the light of love from God. It is not in God's grace. It doesn't, it, when I say God doesn't love you, it's not because God doesn't shine. The sun shines on everything. The sun don't shine, don't not shine on any, everything. 
sun shines on everything. God loves everything, but loves everyone, but you're not, you don't get that love when you're in darkness. So God can't love you. God can't love you. There are certain people God just can't love. And so you ask me, how do I hear God properly? But you can't hear, hear God properly because God don't love you because you're in the dark. How do I figure this out in a biblical masculine way that's better for everyone? Well, you got to marry her. <laughs> you already married to her. But here's the difference between what I'm saying and what you're doing. You're living in limbo. You're living in make-believe, halfway on the fence, lukewarm, gray world. There's nothing more uncomfortable. There's nothing more challenging than living in the, on the fence. Isn't it easier to fall one side or the other? What's worse, balancing on the fence or stepping on one side or stepping on the other? You got to make a decision one way or the other. You're living with this woman in, in sin. So you either move out and do what you got to do based on the law in order to either have your children or have her have your children or whatever. You got to either move out and it sound you're on the fence, so I don't even know what you really sense. Part of you wants to be with her, part of you don't want to be with her. You're already not married to her, so you... you in the sight of God, you're already living in, in, in sin. So you move out with her. You move out from her. There's only two ways to repair this. There's no in-between. Two ways to repair this. And I'm not saying repair it, meaning like, oh, this is going to make your life better. Neither of these situations are going to make your life better. But they will both offer you the chance to, to return to God in a state of grace. You either move out and repent for your sins and do the best that you can with what you got or you marry her you repent for your sins and do the best that you can with what you got but if you continue to live with her in this halfway place you're gonna you're gonna suffer you're gonna it, here's the difference one way either the two things i said you're gonna suffer like ripping off a band-aid Ripping off a Band-Aid sucks. But the faster you do it, the better. You know that? Shh. Rip it off. But by living with her, you're like going slow with that Band-Aid. It's a slow burn. It's a slow, painful death. You're dying a slow, painful death. If you marry her and you have to work through resolving Listen, her Jezebel spirit is that way because you opened the door. You opened the door to the spirit that's inhabited her by fornicating with her and by living with her and for validating sin in her. So the Jezebel is your, is your fault. But if you get right with God, repent and marry her, now you have authority, you have legitimate authority over her. And when you have the when you have the authority over somebody, you have authority over the the demons that want to infest that person. This is all if you if you oh, this is all Father Ripperger stuff. He in his uh, spiritual warfare conference, the, the the one that came out this year, he talks about spiritual authority. When you have spiritual authority of somebody, you can command the demons to leave. A husband has spiritual authority over his wife. And his children. A, wife, a woman has spiritual authority over the children, but not the husband. It's a hierarchy. And the demons know that. That's why, even from the beginning in the, in the, in the garden, Satan wanted to remove Eve from underneath the spiritual authority of her husband. She's not under your spiritual authority. And both psychologically and spiritually, she is playing this Jezebel role. There could be a Jezebel spirit within her and or she could be simply reacting to your effeminacy and your weakness as a man. So don't blame her. You say, oh, I think it's a Jezebel spirit in, in her, my woman. No, it's, it's an Ahab spirit in you. You know the... 
Do you know the concomitant, the concurrent, the co part with Jezebel? The other half of a Jezebel is, um, I just said it. <laughs> Ahab is Ahab. Ahab's a weak man. The reason why Jezebel was able to be a Jezebel is because Ahab was a weak man. You're a weak man. You're being a weak man. You say she's not very respectful because you're not very respectable. You say you're incompatible. But you're perfectly compatible. You're perfectly compatible in your sin, Ahab and Jezebel. You say you're going against your gut intuition. You say you're going against God. You say you're going against all things. So you could continue to, you could continue to suffer or you could rip this Band-Aid off either way and, and you could start to heal. So that's my opinion on that, dude. Hope that helps. Done.